Maybe it's because our summers are over all too soon that I find myself drawn to the tastes and flavors of the sun. Forever Summer is a celebration of food that defies the seasons and brings unclouded blue skies and warmth into the kitchen, whatever the time of year. If there's one memory of summer I carry with me throughout the dark days of winter, it's of this house, the doors and windows wide open, full of light. Because for me, summer is about colour, intensity, brightness, fresh greens, hot reds, yellow, the colour of sunshine, the colour of happiness. In some countries, they believe that eating yellow foods makes them happy. And I'm going along with this, which is why, with embarrassing tweeness, I know, I've called my soup of yellow courgettes and lemons happiness soup. I want these beautiful yellow courgettes cut into quite fine dice. I find the easiest way is just to slice them down and then cut both ways across. I think this is possibly the simplest soup in the world to make. Just want to put a bit of oil in a pan. In with the courgettes. Mm. Let's tumble these in. Some lemon zest. I find adding the zest to the courgettes now, when they're about to heat up, really extracts every last bit of lemon oil out of it. And I want that deep lemoniness, as well as the sour sharpness of the juice. There's something about intense lemoniness that reminds me of, of heat, of summer holidays. So heat on. It's going to give a little stir. I just want the courgettes to soften, which will only be a couple of minutes. And now, I'm going for yellow. I want real yellow. So some turmeric. Turns everything deliciously golden. And although I don't think the ground turmeric has a very pronounced spiciness, I love the mellow woodiness of this. Now stock. And, you know, by stock I mean hot water, about a litre. and a few golden drops of concentrated chicken bouillon. I love this stuff. So for increased lemoniness, the juice of that lemon I just zested earlier, and in this wonderful golden courgette studded broth, a couple of handfuls, 100 grams, of fragrant basmati rice. This just takes 10 minutes or so to cook, plumps up with all the goldenness and yellowness of the soup. A little stir. Mm, I feel I must be getting a tan. I love this mood enhancement of an entirely legal kind. Mm, look at this sunshine in a bowl. I have one almost picture postcard memory of summer, which is of me years ago now, near Malfi Coast, sitting on a terrace overlooking a ludicrously blue sea, with in front of me a glass of white wine, rocky with ice, a bowl of pasta, and behind me this fragrant mesh of lemon groves. I suppose I think of lemons a bit like the salt of the fruit world, because you use them without thinking, and yet, what they do is utterly transformational. This sensational lemon salsa provides instant zing alongside flash grilled sardines. Peel and cut a couple of lemons into chunks. Add the juice of another lemon along with a handful of chopped red onion, parsley and mint, and anoint with some extra virgin olive oil. Finally, just griddle the sardines and you have a quick, easy, uplifting summer lunch. Another great favourite of mine is this lemony prawn salad. Blitz a lemon, garlic, spring onion and olive oil. Pour this over some crunchy cos lettuce and plump pink prawns and top with fresh chopped chives. Worryingly compulsive eating and reassuringly easy cooking.
and you must try my summer take on a regular Sunday roast. Cold slices of velvety rare beef with this spiky lemon salad. Peel and finely slice a lemon and leave to steep with chopped chili, parsley, salt and olive oil. Tip this onto some salad leaves, shave over parmesan and mix together. The deep sourness of the lemon somehow makes the beef taste both sweeter and more intensely savoury at the same time. A lemon drop is the instant liquid hit of summer. I mean, even when it's pouring with rain. Chief ingredient for me, lemon liqueur and a bit of triple sec, which is orangey. I have to say a serious bartender is more likely to use vodka, not this Italian lemon liqueur, but I want as much lemoniness as I can get. OK, this is not just a question of a lemon flavour drink. It is the lemon made drink. So I want a whole lemon peeled, and this is the way I do it. I think it's the easiest. You lose a bit, but it's very easy. Curiously satisfying. Just keep turning the lemon round as you slice downwards. A few bit here. I'm going to just chop it in quarters so that I can get the pips out. Right, lid off, lemon bits in, and a spoonful of caster sugar. Right, so while the sugar is dissolving into the lemon, I'm going to get some ice. Wonders of an American fridge. On top of the lemon and sugar, the lemon liqueur I brought back from a holiday on the Amalfi Coast. About 50 ml. The same of triple sec. Now bang in the ice and poise to blitz. It's like sherbet lemons in drink form, sort of citron presse for grown-ups. Look at that, frosty white, really acid strong. Mmm. Chin chin. Mmm. Fabulous. Now, oh, okay, I'm ready to work now. This slow roast chicken is another way of using lemon, not so much as a flavouring, but as a main event. In this instance, it's chunked up and roasted alongside the chicken and some thyme and garlic, so that the lemon in the heat tends to scorch and almost caramelise. It's absolutely fabulous. Use unwaxed lemons if you can, because you really can eat the whole of the lemon, pith, skin, all. Just chop them into eighths, really. So quite big chunks. Now, this is all you do. Get your roasting tin. There's one medium to large chicken here, cut into ten. I prefer to have lots of smaller portions for this. Put them in. Get that out of the way. Then the lemons on top. And look suddenly lifted into summer. Two whole heads of garlic. Separate the cloves, you don't have to peel them. The thing about leaving garlic in the skin like this is that it brazes in the heat, steams, and it's normally sort of quite pungent taste is mellowed into an almost honeyed puree. Now, a handful of, ah, oh, wonderful, fresh thyme. I just tend to pull the leaves off the stalks just by stripping it downwards. I wouldn't worry about having a few stems. And it's rather lovely to keep some back for later, just to strew the cook dish with these beautiful little stalky bits. About three tablespoonfuls of olive oil, just drizzle it over. 150 mils of white wine, good wine, I mean drinkable. In fact, you can drink the rest while you're eating this. Just mix everything so it's covered, leaving the chicken skin side up. 
It's just a question now of covering tightly with foil. And this goes into a low oven, 160 gas mark three for two hours. And then you just take the foil off and maybe another 45 minutes at number six. And that is really all I'm gonna to do to this now. And what I love to make with the slow roast chicken are these little gem lettuces, braising them. Now, if you thought that salad just had texture rather than flavour, then just try cooking them. I mean, this is incredibly easy, in the sense that you just bung them in a pan and cook them alongside the chicken just for the last 20 minutes it has in the oven. Cut off the brown ends and take away any leaves that look a bit brown or less than perfect. Lie them snugly in a dish. Love these jade bundles. It's stock, about half a litre. I love the sort of golden flavour of chicken stock. Mmm, I'm already hit by all the smells just wafting up. Olive oil, about four tablespoonfuls. Ah, oh, green on green, beautiful. Some thyme, I just strew the whole little straggly stems on top, kind of echo the flavour in the chicken. Salt and pepper. So foil and then stick them in the oven for the last 25 minutes that the chicken's cooking and all will be done and serenely. Meanwhile, you can just sit in the garden having a drink with your friends. a girl for a picnic. I mean, why? But as much as I hate picnics, I love picnic food. For me, it contains everything that's best about eating. Informality, lack of cutlery, lack of portion control. And really, why it's perfect for me is that it's about as far away as you can get from fancy restaurant cooking. Home food just eaten out of the house. I remember travelling through Italy by train years ago when I lived there and I was sharing a compartment with an Italian family who were handing out their lunch and I just marvelled at that wonderful, slow, ceremonious unwrapping, the way they took out salami from their case, sliced it, dispensed these slices, got out a plate full of breaded escalopes and that was for me everything a picnic should be and these crispy lamb chops are perfect contenders. I'm going to fry some lamb chops a la romana, or at least dipped in egg, breadcrumbs, and then fried in olive oil till very, very crunchy. First of all, because there is always room for a bit of brutality in the kitchen, a bit of cling film, some small lamb cutlets trimmed of most of their fat. Though I have to say, in Rome, they have teeny weeny lamb cutlets. I mean, the eye of the chop is about that big. Each of them does feel a bit like the Massacre of the Innocents. And then 
another layer of cling film on top and then you just thwack. If you've got a mallet, use that. I don't. And anyway, I think hitting things with a rolling pin is much richer in comic potential. These really only need a couple of minutes each side just so the crispy, crunchy coating goes golden. And for that reason, they should really be at room temperature before they go into the hot oil. Right. Now, before I start getting the egg and the breadcrumb right, I'm just going to pour some oil in because I want this to heat up ordinary, not extra virgin. You can see that it's yellow rather than that thick, oozy green. It's hard to say exactly how much. It's really easy just to reckon on filling a pan up to about a centimetre's depth. And obviously the dimensions of your pan will determine how much oil that needs. Okay, on with the oil. Okay, time for some dipping and dunking. First eggs, just a couple. These are Italian eggs. You can see they're lovely golden yolks. Salt and pepper and season them well because you want these to be intensely savoury. And it's just a question of whisking to combine. This is really just a glue for the breadcrumbs later. They don't need to get it frothy or anything. Now into the breadcrumbs you want a great a good 10 grams of parmesan and that's probably enough to fill an American quarter cup full pretty generously. Anyway I just go by eye. Now breadcrumbs are not difficult to make but it's slightly tedious. You have to get good bread, you have to leave it to go stale and then you have to grate it all or process it. And I found the easiest way of making breadcrumbs quickly is just by getting some pita bread, splitting it in about 20 minutes it's dried out and then you just need to process them. And I've really processed three pita breads here that comes to about 175 grams of ordinary breadcrumbs. Right, just mix the cheese into the breadcrumbs. Mm. Very therapeutic. Okay, now it's just a question of dipping the chops first in the egg and then in the parmesan sprinkled breadcrumbs. Just wadge it in and heat the stuff over. I find that easier to press on. This is really wonderful weekend cooking because children love doing this. And while I might not exactly leave them alone for a bit of deep frying now, you can leave them alone with this stage. And I'm a great believer in child labor in the kitchen. Have to be some compensations. So just in, and I wouldn't do more than about three in a pan of this size at one time, otherwise the heat will drop too much, and it's that which makes fried food get greasy. If you cook in hot fat like this, everything stays so crisp and light. Now, see, I'll just turn these over, oh, lovely just a minute or two on each side until the crumbs are a deep, deep gold. You know, this is so simple, so quick. You could make huge batches of this and cook them all before a picnic without breaking into the merest hint of a sweat. I mean, look at that. Isn't it beautiful? I just want to bite straight in at the risk of taking all the skin off the roof of my mouth. If anything could make a picnic bearable, it would be these. Just got to crunch straight in, isn't it? Mm. Mm. For a perfect picnic hamper, partner the crispy lamb chops with my fail-safe, low-effort potato salad. Just scoop out the scorched flesh of a few baked potatoes when they're cold and souse them in cumin, lemon juice, salt and olive oil and a scattering of spring onions. 
for a green salad that won't wilt or go soggy however long it sits in its tub, try fennel simply dressed with lemon juice, oil and salt and the finely chopped fronds that feather the top of the bulbs. It may not be suitable for picnics, but if you fancy a little alfresco cooking, caramelised pineapple with Malibu chocolate sauce is hard to beat. There is something so absurdly tropical about a pineapple. I mean, you see this, aren't you? You're on holiday, you're under a palm tree, you've got a drink in your hand. I'm going to up the stakes by adding to it, for that completely holiday feel, chocolate sauce with Malibu in it, which is coconut rum. It's just a question of adding to the chocolate some cream here for 200 grams of chocolate. That's two bars, really. Um, 125 millilitres of double cream and then the same amount of Malibu how wonderful is that love this stuff can't resist it I'm gonna leave that to melt down and uh, get on with a bit of fruit chiseling now a little demonstration soak bamboo skewers in water otherwise they'll just catch fire on the barbecue thread through. I mean, I call these kebabs, but they're really more like fruit lollies. Mm. Sprinkle with demerara sugar for caramelizing effect. And stick on the barbie. The pineapple, I mean, not eaten this way, I'm sure, was always thought to be a kind of instant diet food that, I can't remember what diet it was, I think the Beverly Hills diet, it was thought that somehow the enzymes in pineapple ate up your fat, a kind of liposuction from within. I'd like to believe it, we know it's not true, but... Mm. Now, I'm gonna give the chocolate sauce a slight gentle stir. Oh, I love the way the chocolate just melts into the cream. You get a kind of Florentine swirl. But, don't like any waste. You know, when you've peeled the pineapple, you just squeeze some of the pineapple juice into the sauce for maximum tropical taste. Ah, oh, I love it when all that golden yellow is blitzed black and bronze. Now, it's not often you'll find me unduly concerned with matters of hygiene, but I think if you are going to dip and dunk the pineapple kebabs into the chocolate sauce, sort of fondue style, it's better to give people their individual little bowls of hot chocolate sauce. And, look at that. A cross between a kebab and a lolly. What could be better? Born to dunk. Look.